What's going on guys, Tower Number 9 here, and today I'm going to talk about how I got a top 4 at a local store showdown running Jin Urso. Let's go. So, Jin Urso Resisting Oppression is a kind of unusual leader. Uh, so she deploys at 6 resources as a 4-7 and has an ability where while a friendly unit is attacking, the defender gets minus 1 power. On her leader side, she can exhaust to have one of your units attack and the defender gets minus 1 power. So she's proven to be a really strong hero in limited play, arguably one of the best heroes in the game in draft, but she hasn't been very successful in constructed at all. And in fact, I saw some meta review stuff recently, and Jin was totally absent. Um, there were people that were trying to track like how leaders had done with top eights, top fours, finalists, and event wins across different store showdowns, and Jin was totally absent. She didn't have anything, at least in the thing that I checked at the time. And I was thinking, oh, that's kind of sad. I like Jin. Uh, I think I don't think Jin is necessarily as bad as people think. Her ability can be really good. Let's see if I can put Jin on the map. So I thought, you know, I like her style. I had already won a store showdown, so I didn't feel like, oh, I really need to get more Mace Windows. And I wanted to try playing an unusual leader. So my goal was to at least make top eight for the event and put Jin on the board, so to speak, uh, get her at least something. And so I tested for some time and I came up with this command Jin build. It's definitely not set in, set in stone. It's definitely something that would need more testing if I want to take it to a really big tournament or whatever, but it's a, it's a relevant starting point. So my overall tactics with this build are I want to use Jin's leader ability to fight efficiently in the early game with units and use that as a stepping stone to get to the late game where I have a bunch of strong cards in green yellow heroism. So I have Han Solo, Ewing Reinforcement, Home One. Uh, this means that against control, I can win by using recursion tactics and putting a lot of units on the board. So, you know, if someone plays a super laser blast, I can recover quickly with Ewing Reinforcement, with Home One, things like that. Um, against aggro, I try and be the control, use Jin's ability to do efficient unit combat and potential trades. And against mid-range, it's actually been doing very well. Um, so I would say, you know, probably this would be considered some kind of heavy mid-range or light control type build. And believe it or not, uh, at least in my testing, I was actually undefeated against Yellow Boba. And I'm not saying I was testing against top experts and, and you've, we've really refined it and it's a 100-0 matchup for Jin. I think that's extremely unlikely. But at least in the games that I was playing, doing some kind of casual testing with this build, I was like, oh, wow, this is like surprisingly able to stop Boba. So that gave me that gave me some confidence going uh that maybe this was going to be something real and that maybe uh, maybe it would be able to get some good results. So here's the exact build that I ended up going with. Um, so I have three Battlefield Marines. This is really my best starting play by a lot. I have Colonel Yularen, who's a little bit of insurance against uh, against some of the later decks. You can bring him out with Ewing Reinforcement, and if you have other green units, do some healing. Uh, Leia Defiant Princess, great card. Lothal Insurgent, and uh, sort of an option just for trading in the ground arena. And if they do lead off with a 2-3, you can use Jin's ability to have the Lothal Insurgent defeat it. Surprise Strike, just a core card, super good. Alliance X-Wing, not great, but I want to have at least something I can play in space. Three Echo Base Defenders, three Consortium Star Vipers, two Resupplies, uh, three Falcons, three Rogue Operatives, three Waylays three fleet loot or i'm sorry just two fleet lieutenants actually because there are a uh, a fair few non-rebels in this build um and the fleet lieutenant ability sort of conflicts with Jin's ability bright hope which is you can get uh, leia back with that which is great and it's also just a barrier for your opponent in space steadfast battalion only running two of them here but it is still a classic with the old ecl uh, three Rogue Squadron Skirmishers, which are a decent ambush unit. They can get Leia back. They can get the Battlefield Marine back. They provide some of that recursion gameplay that you you need against the uh, more control-heavy builds. U-Wing Reinforcement, which is just a great card. You can play one card and get several cards out, and it will often be difficult for your opponent to deal with it. Han Solo, Reluctant Hero, also a 3x. He is a powerful ally that can uh, really be difficult for some decks to deal with in the late game. And then two copies of Reinforcement Walker, which is a stabilization card that uh, it's a stabilization card that can be very relevant um, in drawing new cards against control. It can provide healing against aggro. Overall, I think it's quite good. And it is worth noticing that I sideboarded wrong. This is the configuration that I actually ran with. I believe that at the time I was intending to run those two home ones in the sideboard main deck. 
uh, to run only two Consortium Star Vipers instead of three, with the third one being a sideboard card, and to cut, I believe, one Echo Base Defender or one Rogue Operative in order to make that work. However, I configured my deck incorrectly. I had left it uh, still sideboarded after a game at a previous event, or just a casual locals event, and in my uh, in my resetting it or whatever i accidentally left those two home ones in the sideboards they did end up being sideboard cards for this tournament which probably actually helped me once you see what my matchups ended up being so overall and then uh for the base we do run energy conversion lab i think it's really strong there is an argument for 30 hp but especially with things like rogue operative i think energy conversion lab can really help you early on in the game all right so strengths and weaknesses, uh, Jin's ability is allowing you for really efficient unit combat. So if I start with this Battlefield Marine, just a two cost three for vanilla, this is going to win and live against almost anything my uh, my opponent plays. So if the opponent leads off with a Battlefield Marine of their own, use Jin, attack into their Marine, and now mine is alive with one HP and theirs is off the board. Same thing with a Viper Probe Droid. Um, and then there are a lot of units the Battlefield Marine would just beat on uh, based on its stats anyway. So overall, just really strong. Um, the end game is really good with the recursion, the U-wing, the Han, uh, you know, potentially those reinforcement walkers and home ones and stuff. And energy conversion lab is enabling strong plays to fight early in the game. Uh, the rogue operative in particular can sometimes be really strong with ECL. The reinforcement walker offers me a way to stabilize against aggro. Um, in terms of weaknesses, the build lacks any like hard removal options. So Sometimes I, I in my testing I found that if the opponent could get out like an Avenger or something and I didn't have didn't have much board, it was very difficult for me to deal with that. I, I do have some game into it, you know, I can exhaust it with Leia, I can bring out small units that I can sacrifice to it, but I don't have like the Vanquish that would be a, a way to really deal with something like that easily. Uh, additionally, my two cost units other than Battlefield Marine are kind of weak, and the four cost slot is a notable weak point as well. Um, the only thing I have in the four cost slot right now is Bright Hope. I would like to have more stuff there, but I'm not entirely sure what would work. I don't feel that I have enough cunning units to really support Gamorrean guards, for instance. So that may be something that the build will change with future sets, or I might just be overlooking a unit that would already be good. I could see some argument that I should be running like Dodonna or something. I'm not entirely sure. But those are some strengths and weaknesses of the build. I think that my... Um, I think I like playing against Yellow Bobo with this, just based on what was happening in testing, though it is very possible that a uh, really skilled Bo 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 Yellow Bobo player would wipe the floor with me for daring to play Jin. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that, that feels pretty good. I like the recursion tactics into some of the like later game control decks. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting situation overall. I, I, don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a bad deck. Um, but, you know, let's see how we did. So it was a smaller event as a whole, I, I, and I want to flag that just to be very clear. This was not a 32-player event. Um, they held it earlier in the day, and it was in a store in San Francisco. Um, so shout out actually to the game parlor in San Francisco. It was a very very nice place. They had some they had some cool food there as well. Um, and the, it ended up being ended up being four rounds of Swiss. I forget what the exact number was. I think it was a bit below sixteen. I I, I think maybe it was like a and we had an odd number. I, I think it was either a thirteen or fifteen player event. I think thirteen, but I could be wrong. So yeah, just to flag that this was a smaller event. Um, and it was not you know hey it was not the thirty two player tournament, the sixty four player tournament. So you know take these results with a grain of salt. But here's how we did. So round one was against Command Sabine. And I believe I'd played against this player before. And I, uh, you know, it was it was interesting. I, I think I, if I recall correctly, I won the role to go first. I think I lost game one. I won game two. And then in game three, there was a really interesting scenario. So I had a, I, I was going second this time, which I didn't love. And... I had a hand that was playable, but not great. Like, I think what I would have, would have ended up with would have been, like, Lothal Insurgent, uh, Rogue Operative, or Leia, or something, and then, like, a Surprise Strike and a Waylay. And that's not a terrible... That's not a terrible hand. But it isn't the, like, Consortium Star Viper. It isn't the... 
you know, Millennium Falcon, the Battlefield Marine, the stuff that I really want to see early on. So I ended up mulliganing this, and I think that actually ended up being a big mistake because the hand that I mulliganed into was not good. In particular, it did not have a turn one play. It did not have a Falcon or a Star Viper. It did not, uh, you know, I had like a bright hope and I had some stuff that I could put out there, but it was it was not what I most wanted. And so turn one, I just took the initiative. My opponent played an A-Wing. I didn't draw a Falcon or Star Viper to deal with the A-Wing. On turn two, I played out an Echo Base Defender and my opponent used a Wing Leader to buff the A-Wing, which is a huge problem for me. I was able to waylay it, so it, it only got one attack in for five but I really felt like I was on the back foot from the start in this game. And while I did, uh, you know, I did put up a valiant defense, my opponent was able to get past me. So we did lose the, uh, we did lose the first match here to command Sabine, not where you want to start the one, two loss round two. I ended up against a cunning Sabine. I, and, uh, I was not happy to see all these Sabines, by the way. Um, that's not necessarily what I most want to be playing with this deck. I feel like I, I want to be playing a later game. I want to be playing against something where I can bring my uh, bring my end game stuff to bear more than than is possible in the Sabine matchup. But round two against Cunning Sabine, actually, it went really well. Um, I was I felt like I was much more able to get control. I ended up winning actually 2-0 this time. I think my opponent was um, was a bit a bit less familiar with the deck or similar um, compared to the opponent that I played in the first round. And this time I was able to control the board uh, and prevent uh, prevent too much damage from getting through and get the win. So then round three, I actually played against a really interesting build. It was a double red Vader. And I had I have not really seen this before, but but it enabled some very cool plays. So in particular, my opponent was actually playing in a pretty aggro style. And he would he would do stuff like, you know, turn one, play a Death Star Stormtrooper, use Vader's ping, Tarkin Town the unit off the board immediately in order to get that like early tempo. And so that was that was quite interesting. And these games actually almost ended up being like damage races, believe it or not. It was a it was quite unusual. I think in the first game, my opponent was on the ground and I was in space with the Falcons and using that to try and push damage and try to race. And we ended up in a scenario where I ended up being able to get there a little bit faster. So I took the first game. And then in the second game, I, I believe the situation was kind of just more favorable for me overall. And I was able to get the win. But the um, I thought it was very interesting how strong the Darth Vader ability, uh, the Darth Vader leader ability for the ping to one damage to a base, one damage to a unit. I was very interested in how strong that was when paired with Tarkin Town. Um, I, I don't know that there's like enough card pool for double red Vader to be good, but it, it struck me as at least like interesting and doing something that I had not uh, not really given much consideration to beforehand. So that was cool. But in round three, we did get the win. It was two zero. And then in round four, that was a uh, that was a very cool round. So in this round, uh, I was playing against yet another Sabine, this time double red. So it was very interesting. Uh, this was against a player named Brandon, who I had seen at several other events locally. Uh, I believe he actually came in second at a larger store showdown that I attended earlier. Um, and, you know, he's definitely a sort of competitively minded player. So this was like, oh, man, you know, I'm playing against Double Red Sabine, which I was also worried about because I knew that my ECL Star Viper combo was easier for Double Red to deal with than the other versions of Sabine. So, you know, it was not something where I was feeling incredibly happy about the scenario. And in game one, uh, I was not able to get not able to really get get to grips with him and he got the win. So it was going to be it was going to be difficult to uh, come back and try to get this uh, try to get this last round. Um, but in the second game, uh, things were more favorable for me. And in this one, he came, I believe what happened in, in that game was that he, he came close to getting me, but I was able to stabilize with a reinforcement walker. And the reinforcement walker, I think, healed me for six. And at the end of the game, I was at 20. And so if not for that reinforcement walker, I would have been defeated, but it managed to get me just enough extra extra time to get the win. We went on to round three, and this time my opponent was going first, not where you want to be. So in round three, 
there was a very interesting situation. So I had actually cited out my copies of Han Solo, Reluctant Hero, and I had brought in a, a Spark of Rebellion in place there. And I had cited out my two resupplies in favor of a third Bright Hope. And what was the what was the other card that I brought in instead of the there was a third there was a third Bright Hope and there was a third Reinforcement Walker. That's right. So then the um in that uh, in that third game. He started off, I believe, with Sabine, uh, Sabine Wren, Explosives Artist, and I immediately ECL ambushed her with a Battlefield Marine just to get her off the field and try to prevent that early damage. And in this game, I was successful at, I was successfully stopping a bunch of the early damage. I, I was removing units and, uh, you know, pushing things back. When Sabine came out, that was definitely a problem and, and you know, some some more damage started getting through but the the thing that was the thing that was crucial in this game was that i played a spark of rebellion on one turn i think i didn't have something else that was that strong to do and i saw two copies of for a cause i believe in and a heroic sacrifice in hand and so i removed one of the copies of for a cause and in a later turn, my opponent used the Heroic Sacrifice to send an X-Wing into my base for four. And I had drawn another Spark of Rebellion and used that on him and took the other for a cause. And it ended up, again, the life totals were pretty close. But without those copies of for a cause, my opponent couldn't quite close the game. And I did get the win. And... I think the Spark of Rebellion really saved me, honestly, because it was a scenario where uh, I think at the end I had 20 life. So if he had done a, you know, if there had been a fur cause that was able to hit me for four and then just one more Sabine, Sabine ping, that could have been the game. But Spark of Rebellion was able to snipe those fur cause I believe ins out of my opponent's hand and prevent him from having those reach options that he needed to close things out. I was able to get the win and win round four. So we had a first round loss, but then uh, three wins afterwards. And the final result for the deck was 3-1. And that was enough to get me into top four. I don't know exactly how Fantasy Flight does the tiebreakers. I believe uh, I believe there was one 4-0, an undefeated player who was using Command Luke, actually. So shout out to him. Uh, congrats on the win. I believe the Command Sabine that I played in round one was actually the second place player. And then uh, I ended up taking fourth, I think. There were two other three ones besides myself and the Command Sabine. So I ended up in fourth by whatever tiebreaker. One of them was third, one of them was fifth. So we actually not only achieved the goal of top eight, we actually beat the goal of top eight and ended up taking top four instead which I was very happy to see. But to be fair, it was a smaller event. You know, this wasn't a huge, it wasn't a huge thing. So in a sense, uh, if I had just taken top eight, you know, that might have been, you know, I might have been able to go 2-2 two, two and take top eight. So I was I was happy to take the top four instead and have a bit of a stronger showing uh, in, a, in a small event. So good. Uh, overall, I, I thought the deck went, uh, ran pretty well and I was happy to be able to put Jin Urso on the board. So overall thoughts looking forward, I was pleasantly surprised by Jin's performance in testing. I thought she was going to be worse than she was. I actually tested a, the, a similar build with Han Solo, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm honestly liking the Jin version of this better. Now, I'm not saying Jin is bigger than Han. He is better than Han, rather. I know that Han has had more tournament results than Jin, but Jin was able to uh, work pretty well for me here. And all the games that I had felt winnable as a whole, even with lots of aggro, you know, three out of, in fact, all four of my games were against aggro in one way or another. And three of those four were against Sabine builds. And I think Sabine is one of the decks that I was least interested in seeing with this. And I was still able, still able to do well. So that was a positive sign for the deck. I do want to adapt it a bit to play more things that are good against aggro, maybe in the main deck or the sideboard. So I've thought, for instance, about shoot first as a card that can potentially amp up, uh, amp up the early game even more. But it's a little anti-synergistic with Jin's ability, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, I would like to have a stronger four cost slot. I'm excited about modded cohort, one of the previewed units. Four cost command heroism unit on the ground, two four with ambush and raid two. I like the prospect of a unit like that, allowing me to have a nice ambush option that doesn't rely on using my ECL and can pick stuff off in that four cost weak point. Um, 
Will I stick with gin in the future? I don't know. We'll see. I'm interested in testing and refining it a bit more. Not sure this is the deck that I would bring to a tournament if I was really trying to go all out to win. In fact, I'm pretty sure it would not be. But I was happy to beat my goal of going top four for this event or going top eight for this event, ultimately with the top four performance. And I don't know. I don't think Jin's a total joke, and I may well be playing her a bit in the future. So... Yeah, what do you think? Do you think uh do you think I'm a clown and this deck's horrible? Do you think have you been trying gin yourself and find it better better than expected? Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. And yeah, that's gonna about do it for this one, guys. Thanks to y'all for watching, and we'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.